Hi, everybody. Uh, my name is Simona. Uh, I am a content specialist here at Flourish. And um, again, a warm welcome to our very first webinar for 2023. Uh, We're so excited to have you here and to see so many of you uh, joining and being excited to uh, learn uh, data visualization practices, things, um, all things data viz generally. And hopefully we will be able to help you with this uh, throughout this year. Um, but for our very first webinar, we've uh, decided to start with um, mastering data visualization for social media, uh, because we are aware that uh, probably some of you work um, within social media or marketing. Uh, you're probably wrapping up or plan still planning your uh, social media strategy for the new year. And what better time um, than now to kind of try and convince you to uh, put some time and effort in sharing data visualization on social media as well. Um, so uh, today's session is basically going to cover a couple of uh, different benefits of uh, why uh, charts on social media are a very good idea um, and uh, some just basic generic tips on where to start uh, when it comes to creating charts and graphs uh, for any social media platform. Then we're going to cover some of our uh, main tips, uh, something that we um, always do. Uh, in our webinars. And um, as a surprise, and again, as a warm uh, kind of welcome uh, for the new year, uh, at the end of today's webinar, we're going to have a little quiz. Uh, it's very short quiz. Um, but the first person that actually gives us the right answer uh, will actually win a free Canva Pro subscription uh, for the whole year. So please, if you have the time uh, to uh, just stay along until the end of the webinar and just answer a couple of questions, uh, get them right you will be the one uh, lucky Canva Pro owner. Uh, and of course, uh, we are going to finish with some help and resources to uh, get you started. We have a lot of things to cover, uh, so I'm just going to dive straight uh, into today's topic, which is data visualization on social media. Uh, but before we start with the actual tips on um, how you can create uh, charts and graphics specifically for things like Instagram or LinkedIn, uh, because obviously they're a little bit different in the way that you do them for uh, web and HTML uh, embeds and things like that. Uh, I'm just going to focus on the actual benefits of sharing charts on social media and why having data visualization um, in such a medium is it's an extremely good idea. Um, now, for those of you, of course, who have already uh, worked with data visualization or have seen uh, data visualization in the wild, uh, you probably already know what uh, is the main goal of data visualization and data storytelling. Uh, these methods of communication basically help to clearly and effectively tell a story. Um, basically uh, more often buried under lots and lots of data. Because at the end of the day, we know now nobody has the time or the interest probably to um, just read uh, tables and spreadsheets and things like that. Um, and the biggest benefit of data visualization generally is in, well, in its name at the end of the day, it's a visual way to present information. Um, when you think about social media and how you create your content for social media specifically, um, probably this is the first thing that comes to mind. Uh, you need to create something that's very engaging, that tells a story quickly, efficiently, because otherwise, if you just have a block of text or anything like this, people will just scroll uh, down and they wouldn't be uh, engaging with your post. And just simply this uh, um, way of thinking about data visualization that it's a huge time saver and it's an effective communicator should uh, be convincing on its own that data visualization does belong in the social media space and uh, it's an effective way for you to uh, share information with your user base online. I know it's very weird to compare social media and data visualization. Uh, it's almost like comparing apples to pears. However, when you really think about it, um, they have many things in common. And one of those things is that these two, uh, yeah, well, one of them is a medium, the other one is a method of communication, but uh, both social media and data visualization uh, aim to convey information quickly and efficiently. Um, again, on social media, it's it goes without saying, you have limited number of characters, uh, you have limited number of file sizes, you cannot upload um, 500 pages of a report and things like that and expect to engage your audience, especially in the 20. 
uh, first century in 2023 already. <laughs> um, and the same goes with data visualization. Uh, you are trying to um, just engage an audience regardless of their level of data literacy and present information uh, in a most approachable way. Uh, but that's not the whole uh, kind of what's combining uh, social media and data visualization. Another thing is that they both aim to establish credibility and trust. And especially if you're uh, having a business social media account uh, in both B2B and B2C context, probably you're on social media because you would like to just start a conversation with your user base and um, try to engage them and showcase um, in what is your organization um, interested in. And uh, the good point about sharing data visualizations on social media is that they're a very, very good conversation starter. Uh, people are really um, engaging with them. Uh, they like to ask questions, really dive deep into the charts or just share them with their friends uh, if you're uh, trying to do something a little bit more out of the box and uh, funny. Um, so this is a very good way to kind of establish credibility and nurture relationships with your audience. Um, here is just a couple of bullet points uh, of what I've just said. Um, basically, um, of course, maybe I just want to focus just a little bit more on the fact that uh, by sharing data visualizations and uh, citing reliable sources, uh, really diving deep into the data, you can really demonstrate expertise and the data-driven decision-making when it comes to um, your brand. And uh, just when it comes to repurposing existing content as well, sometimes um, in the marketing industry and we as marketers and social media people, we really, that's part of our job at the end of the day. Um, this whole webinar has been prepared with the mind that um, probably if you are a social media person, you might not necessarily be the person responsible for the creation of every single data visualization uh, within your um, company. And that's totally fine. Uh, this is perfect. We don't expect everybody to be a jack of all trades and things like this. Um, but uh, when it comes to repurposing existing content, even if you have a single chart, you can use it in so many different ways and uh, really tell a story uh, with as fewer words as possible. Moving on uh, with my uh, second part of uh, the kind of theory introductory bit um, is the question where to start. Um, if you are a person who, for example, a freelance uh, data journalist or data visualization practitioner that uh, just would like to expand their portfolio and share things on social media uh, to uh, get reach and engagement, you're basically creating uh, something with the data visualization mindset in the first place. But if you're merely the social media um, person that tries to, you know, build trust uh, with your user base and, you know, um, increase uh, brand visibility, then that might be a good question uh, to ask yourself, um, which is, <laughs> how do I tell a good story? This is the essence of data visualization generally. This doesn't just count for uh, social media data visualization. This counts for everything that you're creating with um, within this industry generally. Um, and um, whether you're doing storytelling on the web, whether you're doing storytelling uh, in a PDF format or any other format generally, or on social media, you still need to follow some sort of practices. And uh, if you do those, and if you tell a good story, you have an unbeatable formula for success, for increased reach and for engagement. Um, here are just a couple of examples uh, that uh, we have collected to showcase um, a really good ways to tell uh, to tell a story online. Um, some, uh, some of those uh, visualizations have been created with Flourish as well. And as you can see, uh, we've uh, chosen both Twitter and Instagram just because obviously um, these are two of the most popular social media platforms. And you can see, hopefully you can see what I mean by telling a good story. Um, first of all, you use as fewer words as possible. Um, you get um, something that's shared in a relevant timing for your audience. So for example, this map has was shared um, a, during the midterm elections uh, last year. And as you can see, it took off super quickly it's it had massive reach and engagement just because it was it was trendy it was relevant and this is um, sometimes more important than what kind of chart type you're using whether you're creating a very complicated line chart uh, with thousands of annotations or you're creating something like this another thing that you need to consider is as well um, the the way that this visualization was shared and the file type um, imagine this same animation here but instead of a video that morphs from a coroplet map to a point map, imagine the same thing as two screenshots next to each other. Probably that wouldn't have been so engaging and so, um, you know, uh, literally breathtaking to, to look at. 
Um, so all these kind of things are relevant. They're an important um, thing to think about <laughs> when it comes to uh, telling a good story on social media. Um, here is kind of a summary on a couple of things that you would have to consider when you're creating data visualizations um, for um, any platform. The first as I just said, is of course the platform. Uh, it, we are all probably social media users and we know that of course uh, you don't upload, well, right now you can also upload uh, images on TikTok, but for example, the majority of the time you're going to create videos for TikTok. Um, if you're creating things for Instagram, you can go um, and create a carousel, for example, that splits a chart in half so people can see um, you know, the left side and the right side of your chart a bit better. It, all these things matter when you're uh, planning your social media content, uh, especially when it comes to data visualization. Then, of course, um, it goes without saying that um, after you have chosen and selected the platform, or even if you're creating the same content generally, but you're using different platforms, you might have to resize, you might have to change the uh, chart types, and you really need to think about whether your visualizations would work better as GIFs, whether they would work better as static images, whether they would need some additional elements to be added, and it will work better as a PNG file with some arrows and annotations. Um, and here I'm coming to another point, which is actually the purpose of the chart. The way we at Flourish, for example, use visualizations is by um, kind of providing a sneak peek. So if we share a blog post, uh, if we write a new blog post and we publish it on our website, what we do is we share one or two charts of the blog post, for example. And if you are interested in this topic, you would like to learn more, then you click on our link in bio and see the full thing. Uh, however, you might be having a completely different strategy. At the end of the day, you are the person that determines means these kind of things within your organization. And this is also important to uh, tell whether you're telling the full story or you're just like giving a little bit to the user so they can explore themselves on your website, for example. And last but not least is the relevance. This is exactly what I said. Um, you really need to think about what is your audience interested in? Are you, is your audience interested in sports uh, news coverage? If yes, then probably they wouldn't be that engaging um, when with um, corporate maps showing the US elections and things like this. Uh, at the end of the day, you are the expert of your um, industry and the niche you're working with. And you need to, um, of course, take these things into consideration. When exactly should you post your content? content. All right, so in this case, we're actually starting with our uh, very first tip for today, which is um, choosing an easy to read chart type. So um, let's take a this court diagram as an example. That's not a real visualization, that's a mock-up, <laughs> but let's imagine that it's a real Instagram post. Now I see a court diagram. It's a very beautiful diagram. I love the colors. I love how it looks. Uh, it's something that I would put in my wall, uh, on my wall in my living room. It looks, looks just amazing. However, this visualization has absolutely no headers. So I will probably have to do uh, the extra work of me as the user uh, reading a description or, uh, you know, getting the information myself. Uh, that's the first red flag <laughs> of this chart. The second uh, thing that is missing, for example, is the fact that we are seeing lots and lots of colors, but we have absolutely no idea what these colors mean. Yeah, they're very pretty. They're amazingly looking, but this is, it tells me nothing. And last but not least, um, we see some labels here. There was an attempt to kind of give some visual clue of what is going on within this chart, but I will have to pinch and zoom and try to see on my little iPhone what is going on in this visualization, which probably will result in me just not being bothered at all and just scrolling. Um, this is what we mean uh, by easy to read chart type. Um, the text and every single element, main element within your data visualization needs to be readable and easily visible. Um, if you have a color, if this color has a significance, then you need to kind of find it tricky because you have a very limited space on social media, but you still need to find a way uh, to showcase what this color means. Of course, there is an exception when data visualization is uh, being used as an art form. Of course, uh, this is, as I said, I, I'm not lying. I will definitely have this on my wall. Um, and of course, we see some stunning uh, creations with data visualization, people creating things in Flourish and then uh, enhancing them with uh, third-party softwares to, just to turn them into a piece of art. Uh, but of course, in a more traditional way, you need to have the labels and you need to have the text in order to engage an audience.
This part is divided by two. Um, the first one is a couple of suggestions when it comes to templates for static posts, meaning uh, images uh, such as JPEGs and PNG files. And then we're going to move uh, towards animation and uh, give some videos. Um, as a rule of thumb, uh, especially in Flourish, lines, bar, pie charts, area charts, uh, all the traditional data visualizations that are um, that most people are familiar with are generally a very good start uh, because people know how to read them. And especially if you add some visual clues that we're just going to talk about in a second, uh, then you have absolutely no problem to uh, try and experiment in the beginning with simple charts as line bars and pies. Uh, then we have a Sankey diagram. Sankey is a very good idea because um, it's a stunning uh, visualization and a chart type, um, especially with colors. It just looks lovely. Um, and if uh, incorporating uh, the labels and uh, textual elements properly, you have a great piece of content that really stops people from scrolling on its own. And last but not least, uh, I decided to suggest bubble charts. Now, as a Data viz best practice, bubble charts might not necessarily be the, the best way to visualize any sort of data, but um, in in a way, it, for social media, for example, when people don't necessarily have interactive, um, interactive aspects and are not able to hover over a pop-up and explore data, if you are trying to kind of com just uh, get some relevant idea of um, what is going on with your data, that might be a good uh, chart type to start with, especially because you can add uh, labels like that, you can add images, you can add additional elements and... Um, you know, expand your story in your caption. This is exactly what we've done here uh, some time ago. And uh, it, whenever I see this kind of example in uh, for of data visualization, I always think about things like Spotify Wrapped, for example, uh, because when at the end of the day, this is a, a, an unconventional but still a, a data visualization example. When it comes to animated posts, there is uh, a lot of more ground for experiment, uh, obviously with animation. And the good part is that uh, Flourish charts, uh, generally, most of them have a very good animation um, from the get-go. Um, and you have a lot of uh, pl places to start with, to experiment. Basically, any template could be turned into a GIF or a video. But of course, the racing bar chart is a really good idea. You only take a screen recording of your uh, bar chart race, and you have a, a social media post done. Uh, this is uh, an example from uh, Joe Biden uh, in uh, 2020 uh, when uh, he and his team used Flourish Bar Chart Race to showcase uh, COVID-19 cases in the USA. Um, here is another example from Swiss Ray that created a uh, map for COP27 and uh, visualized it, uh, added some captions and things like that. And last but not least, uh, here we have a GIF from a Flourish uh, social media post that was basically showing uh, who is the owner of uh, different uh, pieces of candy. Uh, that was a Halloween special. Uh, so yeah, a lo lot of things to uh, experiment with. With animated posts, uh, you can literally go um, um, beyond uh, <laughs> anything else. Uh, but we're going to, to talk about how you actually create uh, GIFs and videos with um, uh, of Flourish charts uh, later on. Um, so I just want to mention, we're going to go into more details um, with, about this uh, when Annie actually uh, showcases how she creates social media posts for Flourish. Uh, but I just wanted to make uh, sure that you're aware that Flourish and Canva are now very nicely integrated. Um, we have an in-app here. And uh, what that means is that you can literally drag and drop your Flourish chart uh, into any Canva post and resize it and double check whether it looks good um, on, uh, on your screen whether all text elements are readable and uh, whether everything is uh, visible. And uh, here, that's a little present from Annie. Um, this is the uh, kind of font sizes that she uh, usually does. Uh, yeah, so when you pop your visualization into the social media design, sometimes it's a little bit too small. So these are just some of the ideas for what I use. You don't have to use these sizes, but it might be nice uh, just to have a starting point. Um, but yeah, I'll hand back to Simona. So tip number two, uh, provide enough visual clues. Now I just mentioned visual clues probably five times uh, by now. I hope not, but still, <laughs> I'm sorry if I'm repeating myself. Um, or AKA the way I like to think about this uh, tip is how to stop people from scrolling. Now, why I like doing charts for social media uh, is because there is uh, a little bit more space for creativity or and even being... A, 
not ironic in a bad way, but just like exactly making people stop stopping people from scrolling in a way that uh, you will find kind of weird, I guess, on on the web necessarily. And the first visual clue we like to call these visual clues. And the the first one we're going to talk about is actually images and stickers. Now you can do whatever you want uh, with, this is pretty self-explanatory. You need to add images or stickers if you would like to stop people from scrolling. Uh, and of course, if that fits your branding guidelines. But here is a quick example of what we've done uh, a couple of months ago uh, for uh, our Twitter. So uh, Annie here created a, a very a sweet Sankey chart, a very unconventional way to use the Sankey because uh, this Sankey diagram actually represents the family tree of uh, the royal corgis. And uh, if we like, it is a nice visualization, but if we share this on Twitter, uh, the only kind of a visual clue that this is about dogs or this is about the royal corgis or this is about the queen is by reading the header and the text. Um, when you have something so visual and, uh, you know, eye-catching like a Sankey diagram, most people might not even notice that there is a header in the first place. That's why we had to enhance it a little bit. And this is what we've done. Of course, this this is because our branding guidelines permit something like this, but it's a good way to, to start thinking about your uh, social media presence as well. We've added an image uh, of the queen. And obviously, because the, the way we kind of like read and see things on screens, if you see the queen and you immediately then see a diagram and then you see some dogs here, you might probably subconsciously already know what is this chart about. This is probably about dogs or this is probably about the queen. This is probably about something that I'm interested in, something lighthearted and fun. Um, and this is the one way to uh, for you to engage your users as well. Um, incorporating both images, both arrows, uh, some labels, uh, some useful information that usually will stay in a pop-up or uh, in a panel within a, your interactive visualization. But here, of course, uh, this is just a PNG file uploaded on Twitter, so you don't have the possibility of pop-ups. Um, adding images and stickers is very easy. We usually do it on Canva. And uh, again, <laughs> that more about this in our demo. Uh, but the second part um, is, uh, you know, on a very similar note, but instead of using a third party app or uh, trying to, uh, you know, enhance your visualization outside of Flourish, you can do something similar with chart backgrounds. Uh, this is exactly what uh, the Courier has done here, which is a Scottish um, media organization. And uh, basically, they've added a background image of this area chart um, of a Karen. And even if you don't even if you don't read the header, even if you don't uh, look at the area chart or the annotation for that matter, you see that we are going to be talking about Karens. Um, and this is a good way to stay relevant and to stay trendy and fun. And uh, I personally really, really like this uh, visualization. Now, uh, here is a help doc of how you can set a background image. Of course, you're going to have access to these slides um, in uh, later on. But I'm just going to showcase uh, two things uh, within Flourish. Now, um, let's take a look at this visualization. Uh, this is a line chart uh, to uh, showcase uh, the increase of uh, in revenue of the uh, fast fashion giant uh, Sheens or Shine or Shane. I'm really sorry. <laughs> I've heard so many different pronunciations of uh, this company. However, um, if I share this on social media, what I would personally do, and of course, if my branding guidelines, uh, my company's branding guidelines permit this, I would add a chart uh, background so people are aware, again, subconsciously, that we're going to talk about Shane uh, straight away. Um, this can easily be achieved by going to layout and turning image on. And um, here in this little setting, you can see that you have an image URL. You can add a, a, a file from your computer or you can add an online file. And um, here is my visualization. I've added just a chart, uh, just some uh, background. And immediately now you kind of more or less know what are we going to talk about in this chart. Uh, just a little tip when it comes to um, plot backgrounds and chart backgrounds for social media specifically, instead of having this um, layout image here, um, I prefer to do something different because you can see that my visualization sometimes just goes out of my uh, further on the left from my Y axis and I don't necessarily like this. So what I can do um, is uh, I can go to my plot background and instead I can click a uh, background image here. And the, here is the same image, but this, uh, this time uh, the image only takes uh, the space of my 
actual graphic. It doesn't it doesn't uh, take the space of the whole uh, canvas. And uh, this is a better way for you to kind of resize when it comes to um, image backgrounds. Um, this plot background setting is not available to every single template. Of course, uh, if you're creating a map or something different, you might not necessarily need a chart background, but you can find it in uh, any line, bar, pie chart, or um, scatter plots as well. Um, if you would like to go a little bit more traditional on social media, let's say that you're a newsroom uh, or a media organization that does a lot of things about um, financial data and stock market uh, information and etc., you might probably not would like you might not like to have a image of a Karen or a background image for that matter at all because it doesn't fit your branding guidelines. That's perfectly fine. You can still do um, visual provide visual clues in a very traditional way by using highlights and annotations. Um, here, uh, this is an autoplaying flourish story. Uh, it's not a social media post, but we use this kind of animation for uh, for our Instagram. But you can see that here we have uh, highlighted our um, uh, date on our x-axis. We've added story annotations. Uh, and basically, we are just focusing the attention of the user to somewhere specific on this chart. Because otherwise, A, it's going to be a little bit plain. People might not be interested in looking at this line chart. And B, it's just um, a way for you to exactly provide some sort of a visual clue. Uh, this is exactly what we've done um, in a, oh, sorry, um, in a different social media post we have on our Instagram, which is uh, just a plain chart that showcases uh, the skyrocketing prices of the uh, average UK uh, houses. Uh, but instead of just uh, posting this line chart, what we've done is First of all, we've um, created, we, we did a, a screenshot of this uh, image with the pop-up uh, turned on so people can actually see the value. Um, we've also got a highlight of uh, the COVID-19 pandemic because this is um, this is what mattered for our visualization. And we have a uh, header and a subtitle that basically describe our uh, visualization. That's it. If people don't want to look at the numbers, they can just look at the header and be aware of what are we talking talking about in this chart. Um, we have covered uh, in many different ways. We've covered how to add highlights and annotations. I'm sure Annie is sharing and the, the rest of my colleagues are sharing help docs um, in the chat. Uh, but so I'm not going to go into too many details about this, but just keep in mind that uh, this uh, clue and our next clue is a very good data visualization practice uh, and data visualization tip generally. It's not just about social media. Um, the last thing I want to say here in this section is text and color. Now we have something, um, th this is a Flourish favorite for sure. Um, we call um, legend colors in headers, as you can see here, for example, uh, Reese's has been highlighted in orange to kind of showcase that these bars are Reese's. Um, we call this Riley Legend, which is um, uh, named after one of our uh, ex-Flourish employees uh, who had kind of incorporated uh, this practice in uh, Flourish. Um, but basically adding legend colors in the header is a great way for you to save and maximize your space on social media as much as possible. Because um, this, this orange uh, piece of text in my subtitle actually plays the role of a legend, meaning that what I can do is increase the space of my chart. So the ticks and the labels are more visible and at the same time, people do know what are they looking at? Why is this highlighted in orange? Um, and at the same time, we have done exactly the same thing here with our uh, additional text that we've added into Canva. And uh, we've uh, used a different color for our little label to showcase the chart type so people are not confused. Wait, is this part of the chart? Is this something that points me to uh, something else, et cetera, et cetera. Um, you can do this uh, in many different ways. I highly suggest you read our blog post about um, why traditional legend uh, kind of, you know, they, not, they don't suck, but you can definitely uh, find more creative ways of using uh, uh, colors and text. Um, but yeah, these are our uh, four uh, visual clues that are so easy to provide um, when it comes to social media and social media data visualization. And um, what I would like to do now is basically move to our um, tip number three, uh, which is the additional elements and how you are actually adding these. Um, we're going to be using um, Flourish and Canva for this, and we're going to see things in action. I'm just going to uh, stop screen sharing for a second 
second and I'm gonna uh, give the <laughs> scene over to Annie. Okay, so I have just got some dummy data here just so I can show you some of the steps that we take when we turn a visualization into a social media post. Um, I'm going to hop into Canva now. Uh, so I do have a Teams account, so it might look a bit different if any of you have the free account. Um, and that means that we have a few templates already and we do have some of our branding already in here, but everything I am showing you, you will be able to do uh, just with a free account. So I'm just gonna start from a blank starting point now. Um, and one of my favorite features actually now is our Flourish app in Canva. So I can literally click on this and drag my visualization straight into Canva. So I'm just gonna start that now. Um, and then what I can do is I can just resize this so it fits into the post. Um, but as you can see, the font sizes are a little bit small. They haven't really translated when we're moving from um, a visualization built for embedding to a visualization built for social media. So what I'm gonna do is jump back into Flourish and I'm just gonna change some of the sizing. So I'm gonna start with my header and I'm just gonna change the size here. I'll put it at three um, and the subtitle looks like it's an okay size. So I'll just change the footer as well. And then I'm also going to change some of the ticks on the X axis. So I'll put that down as 1.5. So then when I go back into Canva, you can see it's all sized up there, which is really, really cool. Um, so now I'm actually going to show you how you can create a title in Canva as opposed to using the title from Flourish. So I've just created this visualization again, but without a title. Um, creating the, uh, the title in Canva can be really useful if you want to sort of retain the quality of the text and also if you want a bit more freedom with wiggling it around. Uh, so what I'm going to do is just click text here. And as I said, we have the Canva Pro account, so I've got all my branding here. But you can just pick from one of the fonts, um, one of the free fonts, or, and you can search here as well to find one that suits your brand. But I'm, it's very simple for me. So I'm just going to drag this in and then I'm going to copy and paste my title from here. Um, and then I'm just going to change the sizing and change it a little bit so it fits to um, what I like. So I'm going to make it left left aligned and then I'm going to make it a uh, size 50 because I think it's a little bit too big now and then I'm going to add the subheading in as well so I'll copy that over um, and then I think I will make that left aligned again and then I'm going to make it a bit bigger because again I think that's a little bit small um, but I'm not just going to leave it like this. I think I want to change the background to match our branding again. So I just do that up here. And then again, we, we have our brand colors in there, but you can just add your color through the uh, color finder or add the hex code there. Um, so I haven't changed the background on my visualization. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to hop back into Flourish. I'm going to hop back into my different visualization and I'll show you how you can do that. So you just hop into your layout and then here you can see we've got the background color and you can either put the color in manually. This is good for if you're going to take a screenshot or a screen recording. Uh, but for the purpose of today, I'm just going to turn that background color off. And then you can see that there is no background on there anymore. Uh, and I could, again, leave it like this, but I don't think I will. I'm going to add some extra elements. So because it's about tea and milk, I'm going to use this little milk carton that I found earlier. I'm going to shrink that down, put it on a little wonky angle. And then I'm just going to wiggle that there. And I'm also going to put in a little cup of tea um, just so that people know what I'm talking about. Um, and what I like about Canva is some of the assets that they have in the elements you can change the colors of. So I'm just going to make this one match the other one that we chose. Uh, and you will also notice that my chart is missing a legend. So you don't really know what's going on about. Um, so I'm gonna show you how you can make a fake legend in Canva, again, just for that little bit of extra flexibility. So I'm just gonna take a, a little square and I'm gonna shrink it down holding shift so that it keeps its little square shape. And I'm gonna move that to where I want it. I'm gonna add some text again, and this is just gonna say milk. And then I will put that in the right position 
and then I'm going to duplicate this so that oh let me just lock this so that I can just make this one say no milk and then I will move this back and I'm going to just change the colors of the squares now to match the chart oops sorry I'm just making this a bit more complicated for myself so there we just have a little fake legend and you could leave it like that or if you want to make your post a little bit more quirky um, what I'm actually going to do is just copy this element that I had from earlier that lets me change the color um, and I'm just going to change it to match the colors of the chart and I'm going to shrink it down and just make sure it's straight and then I'm just going to replace the little square with the little mug and then I'll copy it and do the same again and change it to the purple and then just put that over there and then there you go very quickly we just made a really really simple social post and then all you need to do is just click here click download and then you've got your social post ready to upload however you want to upload it so what is really great about uh, Flourishing Cover, as I was sort of saying in the demo, is that you can really, really easily resize your charts for any aspect ratio on any platform. Uh, you can add additional elements such as labels, arrows and icons to your chart to help add context. You can design with your own colors and branding and you can have those saved within Canva Pro or you can just add them sort of manually with the free Canva and you can also export as images and PDF files um, depending on the different platform you're posting on. Now we're uh, just going to move on to our uh, last tip for today, uh, which is um, how to share your charts as videos or GIFs. Um, just because Annie already showed a, a very quick and simple way of view how you can uh, create um, static images. Uh, we thought, of course, um, now with all the trends and uh, everybody uh, getting their news and media consumption through video, uh, it will be a shame for us to not showcase how we're actually creating um, videos and GIFs uh, um, in Flourish. And uh, the way we basically export visualizations as uh, either uh, PNGs, GIFs, or videos are stated here on our screen. Uh, now, when it comes to uh, images, you can uh, use image download. Um, most Flourish charts have this uh, option. Uh, however, um, it's important to um, uh, note that not every single uh, chart type will export every single element. And um, we have a help doc. Uh, if some of, uh, of my colleagues would be able to share about uh, the understanding of different image download options, uh, in some cases, uh, headers and uh, subtitles and of other text elements might not download uh, within the setting. And that is expected behavior. Um, so it's a good uh, source of information. Of course, um, in the very basic way, you can take a screenshot of your visualization. Uh, in some cases, uh, the simpler, the better. If you're in a hurry, you need to create something quick. Uh, simply, you just take a screenshot of your visualization and you can do it via Canva the way in the way that Annie just shared with her bar chart. When it comes to GIFs, um, we are using a Giphy Capture um, as well as FFmpeg, uh, which is kind of a command tool that allows you to convert um, MP4 files to GIFs and and vice versa. You can do lots of different things uh, with FFmpeg, but it's a little bit more tech savvy. We're going to showcase, uh, we're going to see like a screenshot of this in a second. Um, but for uh, user friendly purposes um, at Flourish, we use GIFs, uh, Giphy Capture for Macs. And uh, I think there is a Giphy Capture for Windows as well. Uh, but um, generally, we have uh, advertised and, you know, suggested screen to GIF um, in the past for um, a GIF uh, creation on Windows. And you can convert an MP4 to uh, a GIF file in Canva. However, just please to keep in mind that if you upload an mp4 file and in a Canva 
uh, visualization in just a, in a Canva canvas <laughs> and download it as a GIF. Um, that's only possible um, in a social media context. That's only possible if your uh, MP4 file is very, very fast, like very short, um, because otherwise uh, the whole conversion uh, expands the size of the GIFs uh, sometimes above uh, and beyond the limitations of different social media platforms. So it's good to be aware of this uh, kind of just a little tip here. Uh, and last but not least, um, when it comes to video, uh, we uh, take a screen recording of our screens, which is something that I will be demonstrating uh, just now. So you can see how we do things in action. Um, so, oops, I am just going to uh, go out and I am going to uh, go here. Now, this is something that uh, we've shared um, more than a year or almost a year ago um, on our social media uh, channels, on Instagram as a reel. Um, and we've used a marker map to showcase uh, the uh, favorite restaurants of our team uh, in London. Now, the way we've created a reel is by uh, just uh, creating a story uh, instead of just using a simple uh, visualization. Because um, basically, uh, while I was screen recording my um, my chart, all I had to do is basically click uh, from slide to slide in order to change the positions instead of me trying to adjust this uh, while I'm screen recording and making a mess out of everything. Uh, so whenever you're creating a video and the screen recording of a flourish visualization, uh, I would almost always recommend uh, taking a uh, creating a story and screen recording the story itself. Now, um, another uh, crucial part of uh, your visualization and of your screen recording is uh, to basically preview your visualization in the right uh, dimensions and pixels. Everybody who has used Flourish, you've probably um, known that we have different options for you to preview your screen, whether it's in a new window or um, at a, preview, a typical tablet or mobile with. Uh, this is very useful and we definitely recommend it when it comes to creating charts for the web, uh, just to showcase, uh, just to double check whether uh, your visualization is what you want it to be uh, on different uh, aspect ratios and mobile, mobile sizes, uh, screen sizes generally, um, and etc. But uh, something uh, very handy here in this case in particular is to preview your visualization at custom size. Um, now, since uh, my idea for this chart was to create a um, Instagram reel, we know that the, um, as the pixel proper pixel size for it is 1080 by uh, 1920. However, I have a problem here because unfortunately this is great, but uh, my screen is too small for such a big uh, pixel preview. It's, it's just impossible for me to create a screen recording with such a massive uh, visualization. Um, and in order for me to fix this by, by still preserving the aspect ratio of my uh, preview, all I had to do, and I definitely recommend this as a successful way to do these things, is literally dividing these numbers by three or by two if you have a bigger screen. Uh, at the moment, I have a 13-inch um, uh, computer, and dividing these numbers by two simply wouldn't work. It will still be too big. However, if I use um, 360 by 640 pixels uh, instead, you can see here that now this looks much more like an Instagram reel um, aspect ratio. <laughs> now we have a different problem, however, and this problem is that uh, this preview is great. However, it does take into consideration our uh, uh, captions in the header as well. And uh, this, especially for a screen recording, I personally don't feel like you will need it um, just because for better reach and engagement, uh, you know, I know that the most social media practitioners add uh, captions in its native app, and I feel like this will work better as well. So all I need to do is just uh, go to my navigation style and select none. Um, and now that I have this visualization, all I need to do is basically create a screen recording. And while I'm creating a screen recording of this particular square uh, rectangle, um, all I need to do is uh, just select manually slide number two, slide number three, slide number four, and uh, et cetera, et cetera, until I am done with my visualization. Um, especially when it comes to maps, one more thing I would like to recommend uh, here is just to, um, instead of having uh, 360, make Maybe um, try to increase the size uh, with something like um, 
15, for example, uh, just because I don't know if you you can see on the screen, but there is a little bit of a white line here, uh, which, uh, you know, is also taken into consideration when it comes to these kind of uh, sizes. And uh, by increasing it with like 5 to 10, 15 pixels, uh, you will actually uh, are resolving this issue. Um, now, I really wanted to showcase how to screen record on a MacBook, which is uh, the um, operating system I'm using at the moment. However, we've encountered some issues while screen sharing on Zoom. Uh, so unfortunately, I will just showcase uh, uh, the uh, Apple support uh, website. So um, I apologize for this, but um, yeah, it's just technology, <laughs> but you can take a screenshot uh, by uh, holding down shift command and five and uh, this little handlebar will open and you will be able to record a specific portion of your screen, which should be uh, exactly the um, your visualization in this uh, selected preview. And for uh, Windows, as far as I'm aware, you can use your um, kind of um, Xbox, uh, Xbox gaming uh, system, which will basically record both um, your screen and audio. And I know that um, um, uh, you know, gamers are, are using this way for screen recording. Um, here is the final piece on uh, Instagram that was created, um, yep, yeah, just almost a year ago. And uh, this is how it looks like. You see, uh, sometimes, you know, of course, uh, lots of people have uh, problems with the quality when they upload things on uh, Instagram and uh, TikTok, uh, but uh, you can see that this method of previewing your visualization, uh, the splitting the, the preserving the aspect ratio, but dividing the pixels uh, by three is actually uh, giving very good results. Um, of course, the same thing can be done uh, by using um, uh, Giphy, Giphy Capture here. Um, I don't know if uh, Hopefully you will be able to see this green screen here, but uh, when it comes to GIFs, you can also do the same. You can resize your screen and uh, click record, resize, uh, basically just um, capture a selected portion of your uh, screen and uh, save as a gift, in, uh, gift <laughs> as a GIF instead of a MP4 file. Um, and mentioning GIFs, uh, um, again, just wanted to showcase uh, a little bit more about FFmpeg because this is a very recommended way of creating GIFs because it produce, produces higher quality results. Um, generally, um, GIFs are very tricky to me personally because they're either very large in size or they're very um, not that good as a quality as I would like them to be. And uh, FFmpeg, for example, can solve your issue with that. However, of course, uh, this is a command line uh, or a terminal uh, program, so you need to uh, use your terminal in order to execute these kind of commands. And for example, every single number and every single uh, little shortcut has its meaning. Uh, so for example, the uh, FPS equals 10, that means 10 frames per second for the GIF, scale is 320, et cetera, et cetera. And uh, of course, um, there is a... Um, I'm just seeing now that I unfortunately didn't provide the hyperlink to um, uh, some useful commands on how to use FFmpeg, but I will ensure that uh, before you get these slides, there's going to be documentation on this one, of course, if you're interested. If you're looking for something that's more user-friendly and most importantly, you're using GIFs uh, for for some very short uh, pieces of content, uh, then uh, you know user-friendly apps that you can install in the App Store and uh, things like Giphy might be much more useful to you. Um, however, um, this is just, of course, my personal opinion. I wouldn't like to uh, overrun with uh, just some rambling, but we as uh, people, we have uh, our searching habits are changing. People, younger generations are now using TikTok uh, to search for things. And I generally feel like um, if you can replace a GIF with a video, uh, do, do it. Just do it. Um, I don't see, uh, unless you, for example, are creating content for a newsletter or somewhere where you would need to use a GIF, I would always go for a video instead. Uh, but that's just, of course, my opinion. Um, Ani, if you would like to say a few words about... Um, platform requirements. Hello. So I thought I'd just pop back in with a few things to keep in mind uh, when you're creating your content for your socials. These might be really obvious, but I thought they were quite helpful. Uh, so for Instagram, you obviously can't post links in the captions. So just bear that in mind. It will have to be through a link in bio tool or posted through the stories. Um, and you also can't upload GIFs to Instagram. It will have to be videos. 
Uh, for LinkedIn, you can't post videos and images in the same posts, but you can do GIFs and images. I've had a few issues with that before. Um, and I will touch on this a little bit more in a minute, but you can only do 300 characters for alt text, which can be a little bit tight if you're trying to describe a data visualization. Um, and also just be aware that your GIFs must be below five uh, megabytes. Um, and we sort of covered this a little bit in the chat, but you can use FFmpeg or you can use other free tools to compress your GIF if it ends up being a bit too big. Um, for Twitter, you can't post GIFs and images in the same tweet. Um, you'll have to do that as a thread instead. Uh, GIFs have to be below 15 megabytes um, and on desktop and five megabytes on mobile. So again, just keeping in mind, maybe using the GIF shrinkers. Um, and also you only have 280 characters, so you can't write really, really long ca uh, captions, which can be a little bit annoying when you've got a, a big story to share. Um, and then, so going into a little bit more detail about alt text. So alt text is a written description added to images that convey the meaning of the visual. Uh, not writing alt text means that people miss out on content that is necessary just because it is visual. And this is really, really important to put on with your social posts. You can do it on every platform um, and it just helps to make your content accessible to everyone. Um, and so this is a formula that we have pinched from an article um, by Amy Suzelle. Um, It's a really, really great article. So we've popped the link there and I'll pop the link in the chat in a minute, but it just says, so for your alt text, you want to put the chart type um, of the type of data where, and then you put your reason for including the chart. Um, she also says to include a link to the data source somewhere in the text, but that's not always necessarily possible with a social media post. Um, but yeah, it is really, really important to try and use alt text. Yeah, thank you so much, Annie. Um, again, um, this was just more of a, a bonus tip almost. Um, just, yeah, don't uh, forget alt text. Um, but um, with all that being said, I think we are ready to wrap up. Those were our four tips on um, how to use data visualization uh, on social media. And hopefully um, you've kind of uh, learned something new or got inspired uh, to kind of brainstorm your own um, creations on social media. Uh, but before we get to the interesting part of today's webinar um, for an ending, of course, um, we can uh, just sum up a little bit uh, our key takeaways from today. Uh, the first one is that data visualization and using data visualization on social media can really help you increase engagement and start a conversation with your audience or potentially attract new users. Um, when it comes to um, conveying a message and telling a story, the chart type almost um, it's of course it's relevant, but it's not as relevant as uh, the way you're telling a story and how quickly and effectively you convey this message. Um, it's always important to make sure that all chart elements are easy to read um, and are. Uh, very easily visible uh, by everybody. Um, there are some uh, good accessibility practices that we have shared on our blogs and in our um, help pages as well. So hopefully that will be uh, some kind of a starter point for you as well, uh, if you haven't done this before. Uh, please make sure that your visualizations uh, come with useful visual clues. Of course, um, you don't have to overcrowd your visualization because that will lead to, again, uh, information overload, but um, anything that will help someone see a visualization and grasp it from the get-go, uh, that's a good sign. Um, labels, arrows, colors, had colored headers, images, etc. And last but not least, please do remember that each social media platform has its different requirements uh, and don't, uh, you know, just remember to check these uh, so you're not disappointed uh, to see that the file type, type is not supported and things like that. Um, but yeah, that was everything uh, for those of you who were joining uh, just to, um, you know, educate themselves on best data visualization practices for social media. Please feel free uh, to give us um, your feedback. And uh, for those of you who are interested uh, in more uh, flourish things, I'll give over to Annie. Okay, so uh, we're just going to wrap up really quickly with some new features that have come out recently in case you're interested. Um, we've introduced Mary Meko charts to our selection of premium templates and you can read more about this on our blog um, and you can now also display value labels in our hierarchy template and you can read more about our updates in our change log. Um, yay. yay, so <laughs> if you could just 
Yeah, perfect. And we have a bunch of resources here that will all be linked when we send over our email after the webinar. Um, and if you have any questions or you want to reach out, please reach out to us at these email addresses. Um, so the top one for webinar specific questions, the bottom one for anything else. And also feel free to follow us on social media after this social media webinar. Um, all of our accounts are there um, and it'd be amazing to see you there.